This revision video is focused on the molecules known as the alkanes. So the alkanes are uh, members of something called a homologous series, and there are th many different homologous series in organic chemistry. Homologous series is chemistry speak for family of molecules. And essentially, this is what you want to talk about when you're describing a, a homologous series. They are a series of organic molecules that have the same general formula. We'll talk about that later when we're talking about the alkanes. Similar chemical properties because they all contain the same functional group, which is the group of atoms that give them their chemical properties. But they have similar, not the same, but similar chemical properties and a graduated trend in their physical properties, i.e., for example, their boiling point increases as their chain length increases. And each successive member of the family should increase by CH2 in length as we ascend the, the series. So to recap, same general formula, similar, similar chemical properties, a graduated trend in their physical properties, such as boiling point increasing with chain length, and each successive member of the series should increase by one carbon and two hydrogens, CH2, in chain length. There are some definitions you should be aware of when you're talking about the alkanes. The two you're going to hear about are that they are hydrocarbons and that they are saturated in nature. So, what does hydrocarbon mean? It means they are molecules comprised or composed of carbon and hydrogen atoms only. Really important to get that only in there as well. Don't say they're a mixture of carbon and hydrogen, that's incorrect. They are molecules, covalently bonded molecules, composed of carbon and hydrogen atoms only. And they're also saturated. In, or in organic chemistry, that has specific meaning. It doesn't mean that they are full of hydrogen. That's quite a loose way of describing this. It also doesn't mean that they are full of water. That's another context of saturated when you think about pitches, football pitches being saturated with water. In organic chemistry, saturated stands for containing or composed of carbon-carbon single bonds only. So these hydrocarbons, these molecules are composed or contain carbon-carbon single bonds only, and that's what we mean by saturated in this context. Then we're going to think about how we would name and draw alkanes. So you may have heard of monkeys being used as a good aid memoir for naming uh, uh, organic molecules like the alkanes. So this aid memoir, the monkey picture, is there to remind us that monkeys eat peanut butter peacefully and happily. And this uh, naming system, monkeys eat peanut butter peacefully and happily, allows us to work out the uh, nomenclature of the first, or naming of the first six in the series. Methane, ethane, propane, butane, pentane, hexane. The prefix stands for, or helps us know the number of carbons inside the molecule. So meth stands for one carbon, eth for two carbons, prope for three carbons, bute for four carbons, pent for five carbons, and hex for six carbons. The ane, the suffix, is the family name or homologous series name of this particular family of molecules. So they're the alkanes, so every member of the family will end in A-N-E because it, it, it helps us recognize them as that family. So methane, ethane, propane, butane, pentane, and hexane, they're all members of the same family or homologous series. Then we've got the three different types of formulae you might be asked to draw. Molecular formula, structural formula, and displayed formula. Molecular formula is by far the simplest. It is essentially the various numbers of different atoms, of different elements inside the molecule. It does not give you any information about arrangement or where you find them along the chain. It simply tells you the number of specific elements of different atoms inside the molecule. Structural formula, which you can see gets more complicated as you go down, tells us not only the number of different atoms of different elements, but also how they're arranged and their order inside the molecule, how they're arranged inside the molecule, where you find them. And finally, a displayed formula is the most detailed. It tells us not only how many atoms of different elements and where they're arranged or how they're arranged, but also what bonding they have between them. And it shows that bonding as a line diagram. Okay, so methane, pretty simplistic, CH4, CH4, and a displayed formula is CH4 again for all the bonds shown. But you can see the structural formula here becomes more complicated, and this is one that always catches people out. So I'll explain these two to you now. So ethane is C2H6, so two carbons, six hydrogens bonded to them, and a one single bond between the two carbons. But this structural formula shows it in a little bit less detail without the bonding, as in without the bonds shown, but it does show the arrangement still. So this is ethane. You can see the first carbon is surrounded by three hydrogens, CH3, and the second carbon it's bonded to is also surrounded by three hydrogens, CH3. The maximum number of bonds a carbon can form is four. It's tetravalence, so it's never going to be more than four uh, bonds around any one carbon. That comes in handy later when we talk about alkenes. 
Now, the next one up is propane, C3H8. So if I build uh, that molecule for you now, you can see how the structural formula is generated. So the first carbon in this molecule is surrounded by three hydrogens, CH3. The second one, the central carbon, is surrounded by two hydrogens, CH2. And the third carbon is surrounded by three hydrogens, CH3. And again, the display formula simply shows you all the single bonds as well, in, in, including those between the carbons. Uh, and as you can see, I've laid out the first six, getting more complicated to go down. Just let you internalize that for a second. You can see all the display formulae, structural formulae, and molecular formulae there. Because there's a pattern to this. They seem to be getting bigger by a certain amount each time. That's what the general formula allows us to uh, work out. The general formula is the algebraic expression of this pattern as the molecules get larger. And it turns out for the alkanes, that is C to the N, H2N plus 2, where N is just an integer, the number of carbons. So, for example, I could prove using the general formula, the hexane will always have this formula. So C to the N, if the carbons is 6, C to the 6, H 2 times 6 plus 2, 2N plus 2, 2 times 6 is 12, plus 2 is 14. So I can work out any alkane formula I like using the general formula, algebraic, algebraic expression, to generate that formula. And it will work perfectly every single time. So that's an overview of the alkanes. You also need to know about their, their reactions. And there are two main reactions you need to be aware of. First of all, their combustion or their burning reactions. So combustion is essentially burning an alkane in a sufficient amount of oxygen, i.e. excess oxygen, a lot of oxygen around. Uh, and that could be, for example, you could say very simply, we're saying a fuel plus oxygen forms carbon dioxide and water. And complete combustion always forms just two products, and they're always carbon dioxide and water. I could take a specific example here, so I could burn butane, a refinery gas, in oxygen, and I would always form, if it's complete combustion of enough oxygen, carbon dioxide and water. You might be asked to generate balanced equations for that. So the first thing with that is you'd want to write out an equation without the numbers. So um, just a standard symbol equation without balancing for combustion is fuel, butane, plus oxygen, O2, forms carbon dioxide and water. And then you think about doing some balancing. So I can see there are four carbons on the left-hand side of this equation. There need to be four on the right. So by putting a large four in front of the carbon dioxide, I'm timesing this molecule by four, giving me four carbons. I can't change subscript numbers. That would change the identity of the molecule. I can see there are 10 hydrogens here. I want it to be 10 on the right-hand side as well. So by times the whole water molecule by five, I generate 10 hydrogens, and I balance out or match out against the 10 here. The problem being, looking at what happened to the oxygens once those numbers have happened, 4 times 2 is 8 oxygens, and 5 times 1 is 5 oxygens. That's 13 oxygens. Now, if I halve that to, to, to um, generate the same number on the left-hand side for my oxygens, I'm unfortunately going to get a half integer. I'm going to get 6.5 oxygens. That is fine for a combustion reaction. It can be left as so. But some people feel quite uncomfortable about that because it doesn't really sync with other balanced equations you would have written for other reactions. Not a problem. Simply times by a common factor to remove the half. And that common factor would be 2. So I times all of these by 2, all of these integers in front of the molecules by 2, I get rid of the half. So times that by 2, I get 2. And times the 6.5 by 2, I get 13. Times the 4 by 2, I get 8. The 5 by 2, I get 10. And now I have a balanced equation which doesn't have a half anymore and might make you feel more secure about what you've just done. The second type of combustion is incomplete combustion. Now, this occurs when there isn't excess oxygen around. So when an alkane fuel burns or combusts in an insufficient supply of oxygen, this could be in a boiler, a faulty boiler in a home, or inside a, an old car engine, or even inside a tent, if you're to take your, your little barbecue, your portable barbecue, and bring it inside the tent, close the tent up, and then it's smolder. You can generate some pretty nasty things through incomplete combustion. Now, incomplete combustion generates different things to complete combustion. There's no carbon dioxide in incomplete combustion. Instead, you get carbon monoxide or carbon or both. Uh, and particularly, the carbon monoxide is nasty stuff. Carbon particulates aren't particularly good for you, but carbon monoxide, not a nice gas at all. Again, you might be asked to write a balanced equation here. So I've got ethane, small gaseous fuel, burning an oxygen, not very much oxygen, form carbon monoxide, carbon and water. Now, um, balanced equation for that, again, you just lay out the equation without the numbers first of all. So ethane plus oxygen 
forms carbon dioxide, carbon and water. Then you think about your balancing. Well, I can quite clearly see I've got six hydrogens here, but only two on the right hand side. So if I times that water by three, I now have six hydrogens here, six hydrogens here. Count up all the oxygens I've now got, three times the oxygen there, three times one, plus the one oxygen in the carbon monoxide is four oxygens overall on this side. Mm, need to have four on this side as well. Times that by two, four oxygens, balanced equation. I can also see two carbons and two carbons here and here. So it's all balanced. The problem is this stuff. Carbon monoxide, not very nice. Over here. Carbon monoxide is a toxic and poisonous gas. So the key thing to focus on is its toxicity. And it works in a very specific way. Its mode of action is it binds irreversibly to the haemoglobin in your red blood cells. This reduces your red blood cells capacity to carry oxygen around your body through your arteries and capillaries. This means your organs are eventually starved of oxygen and start to fail. And this can lead to eventual death, particularly you'll feel nauseous, you'll feel dizzy, a bit like I just shook the camera there, and it will it will lead to um, you know, eventual death if not, if not uh, removed from that situation. People often get this wrong by saying that the gas is suffocating people, or well, the gas doesn't strangle you in your sleep, it's simply uh, taken up by your lungs and then gets into your bloodstreams. Do not say that carbon monoxide is suffocating, that is incorrect. Going back to complete combustion, we've mentioned that carbon dioxide is generated. Carbon dioxide also has its negative side. Carbon dioxide is a greenhouse gas, and it, so it can contribute to the issues of global warming. In fact, carbon dioxide is the most prevalent uh, greenhouse gas we generate, and therefore is really uh, adding to humans' influence on global warming. Okay. Finally, a little extra caveat here. The, the other reaction which um, alkanes can get involved with but only under very extreme circumstances, is a substitution reaction with bromine water. Now you're going to learn that bromine water is used to test for alkenes, and that's perfectly legitimate. But occasionally, bromine water can, under very extreme circumstances, react with alkanes as well. So alkanes generally don't react with bromine water. In normal conditions at room temperature, no reaction. But if you expose the, the two reactants to UV light, very high energy, light, then you can force a reaction to occur. And the type of reaction taking place is a substitution reaction. I've got an example for you here. This is methane and this is bromine water. Bromine water is bromine dissolved in water and bromine molecules dissolved in water and it's orange in colour. It's dilute, it's orange in colour. But in the presence of UV light, if I mix these two things together, I would form uh, two colourless products. It would turn colourless over time. That's because the bromine has uh, been substituted itself in and taken a hydrogen out of this methane. I'm not going to go into details of how that happens, it's quite complex, it's called a free radical substitution, I'm not going to talk about that today, but essentially the bromine adds itself in and plucks out a hydrogen and you get two products at the end, uh, the bromine added in to the methane, okay, so you get this bromomethane molecule here, and hydrogen bromide, the other bromine, it takes the hydrogen which was plucked out from this molecule. An extra little caveat worth remembering because it occasionally comes up and catches people out, so have a look at that in more detail if necessary. And that's the alkanes in full.